Hello everybody, I'm Roadblock and we have another Raid Shadow Legends video on the free to play account today. And we did it. We did it. We have a one key Ultra Nightmare clan boss team at last. Finally, we have achieved it. So uh, I'm going to go through the rewards real quick here on, on camera. Um, and then I'll show you guys the team. I will talk to you about the challenge it was to build the team because it was not easy. Uh, and then I'll show you the team and then I'll have to crash my game uh, in order to not waste the key because I do want to be able to, to show you guys the final result and not make you sit and wait for an hour or two. I don't really know how long it goes because I canceled it after the first 70 uh, run. So... All right, just going through here. What we're really looking for is another legendary book right now because there there is a slight problem in the team, and I will show that to you guys when we get to it. So, kind of proof, we have Quick Battle unlocked, right? So we know this team worked. Uh, good news is this is the same affinity that I was working with yesterday. So I should shouldn't have any issues <laughs> with the team not working now i haven't tested every affinity obviously but i do want to talk about a couple of the issues and then of course we'll go over the team so first we have witswell built leveled up mastered now the masteries are not necessary for this uh well you might need them on witswell for a couple of things but I don't, I, I want to be clear about something, I guess, up front, that this was a very challenging team to build, surprisingly. I, you know, you re, you watch all these videos, and they say, oh yeah, just throw them in there, get the, use this aura, get these, get this, um, get hit these speeds, and it's going to work. And it kind of is true, but what if you don't have those champions? Or what if you don't have those champions leveled and you're like me and impatient and don't want to wait to get high Katoon leveled or another, you know, another champion or something like that, right? How can you do that? How can you figure out a way to make this team work? There's a lot of different options. I tried everything. So obviously I started with Wixwell. Let's talk about how a Wixwell team works real quick. So a Wixwell team works like this he puts a large shield on your team and then he increases the value of that shield over time throughout a long fight it gets larger and larger to the point where it actually is larger than what the clan boss can do as far as damage goes okay that's the concept how can this fail one is the damage coming in is greater than the value of the shields that are being extended and increased two the buffs fall off meaning that you can't keep the buff extended long enough how do you correct this you bring buff extenders so in my case i'm bringing godseeker aniri and anchorite let's finish talking about the team and i'll explain more about them so they extend the duration of the buffs and that gives wixwell time to increase the value of all shields on all allies until the point where we can't die. Essentially creating an unkillable team that will go 1,500 turns, which is the turn limit in the game, and get you really high damage numbers on Ultra Nightmare Clan Boss. Essentially giving you a one key. It's a longer one key than you might get from a 50 turn unkillable team with like a Demitha comp or something like that. But it is easier to build in the sense that you don't have to hit very specific speed tunes you just need everybody to be fast to a to a point now i tinkered with this a lot my whole plan was just to build people fast and with in in wixwell's case a lot of defense in anchorate's case a lot of hp uh and in godseeker's case a lot of defense so fast and and then their primary or, and then survivability, right? That was the plan. And it looked like it worked. At the beginning, 
I actually record started a, so I, I I ran a team. I did like ten turns. Looked fine. I was like, yeah, I did it. Cool. Stopped the team. Recorded. Started the team. It failed. <laughs> uh, within like eleven turns, I was like, wait a minute, this isn't right. What's going on? What's it? So um, it's more than just having three buff extenders. And I did a lot of research, uh, or not research, that's the wrong word. I did a lot of testing. I did a lot of experimenting and trying different combinations of champions, different different plans, goals, all these different things to try and get a team that would work 100% of the time with minimal kind of effort and i learned a lot of different things so the final version of the team is wixwell godseeker anchorite geomancer and ursula which may surprise some of you uh she doesn't really bring you know you'd think okay three extenders and then two damage which is what most of the stuff you're seeing is but i'll explain why ursula it was important to the team in a little bit Let's go over the builds real quick. Um, for Wixwell, we've got 228 speed. I have done all the way up to 250 speed uh, and all the way down around 200 speed. So I've done quite a few different speeds with him, but 228 is fine as long as you have some of the criteria that I'm going to talk about. For Godseeker, she's actually a little bit faster I don't want her to be faster necessarily, but she is a little bit faster than Wixwell. Uh, so it's important to note that in this team, I actually have her open with her A1 because I don't want her to waste her buff extension when there's no buffs to extend. Ursula's speed really doesn't matter. 207 is what we're at there. Geomancer's speed doesn't matter. 208 there. Anchorite's speed is 208 as well. So he's a little bit slower than Godseeker, but the reason he's slower is because he's in my shield set. I don't have very good shield set gear. Uh, I do need to have a four-piece shield set to make this team work, and this was the best gear that I had. You also need to have high HP because the shield is based on HP, so you want to have a big enough initial shield that it doesn't immediately get blown off, right? Um, if I was to put this on, like, my Rathalos, who only has 35,000 HP, versus Anchorite, who has 77,000 HP, that shield's going to be really small and possibly get knocked off right away, right? So, he's a little slower than I would like, and that's actually why some of the higher speeds, like when I had Wixwell at 250 speed... And Godseeker at 2... Th uh, I think she's at 230 still. Um, but I actually had them too fast. And Anchorite was falling behind and couldn't keep their buffs extended long enough. Which was a bit of a problem. Now, a we'll talk about that later. Sorry, I was getting a little sidetracked. There is a lot that goes into this. And there's a lot of different ways to run this team. This team does not have a speed lead... And it does not have a speed buff, which I learned is more than just increasing the speed of your team in terms of why it's important. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. But this is the team team build. Um, nothing too crazy. Geomancer has accuracy and survivability, what he needs. And um, Ursula... I did have to change her. Remember, if you if you remember, if you've been following my series for a while, I did have her in crit rate gloves and an attack chest. I had to change that because she is my stun target, at least on this affinity. And she takes too much damage if I'm not careful, which ultimately ends up in her dying. Which, you know what? Come to think of it, isn't that big of a deal. <laughs> if Ursula was to die, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> um, she's really only there for the very first turn. Uh, I do like that she continuously gives me a, uh, a guaranteed decrease attack because she is 
void affinity, so it doesn't matter what affinity the boss is. So I do appreciate that part of her kit, but honestly, if she was to die, it it's not that big of a deal once her buffs are out there, which I didn't think about when I saw her die in, in uh, a previous run. But that's the team. Let's talk about what I've learned. So if you were to take Wixwell and two Godseeker Aniris, you're going to have a hard time. The reason being is that Wixwell's buff or value of shield increase is proportional to the total number of buffs which had their duration increased. Godseeker brings no buffs. This is important. Because if you're not extending those buffs, his shield increase is that much smaller. So a lot of teams that you've probably seen, or at least that I've seen, ran a speed lead that also gave increased speed to the team, such as High Katoon. So High Katoon, if you look at her kit, she's 40. So she brings increased speed, the big version, when uh, ascended. So she brings one additional buff, as well as a 19% speed aura, and of course, um, the speed that you get from increased speed. So that makes your team go that much faster, which is important. You do need this team to cycle through their abilities very quickly while not outrunning their own buffs. So increasing the speed of the entire team is better than just increasing the speed of one champion. I tried running just Wixwell at a very high speed, and like I said earlier, he outran his buffs. So running a speed lead is the easier way to do it. As you can see, though, my high Katoon is only level 40, and I'm not a very patient person. The other thing I thought about doing would be Razzlevarg. Well, let me, sorry, let me explain why this increased speed is more important than just increasing the speed of your team. Like I just said, it's proportional to the number of buffs. If you don't have a lot of buffs, that shield increase won't build fast enough you could potentially just outspeed that problem. If you have Wixwell on a two to one ratio or higher, he'll eventually just cycle through his value increase so quickly that you'll build the shield up fast enough. That's what a lot of teams do. It's the easier way to do it. Nothing wrong with that. I just didn't have the team available to do it. So I had to improvise. So what did I do? Well, rather than increasing the amount of times that Wixwell extends and uh, increases the value of shields, I made the value that he increases it by larger by bringing a lot of buffs. Thankfully, one of my buff extenders, Anchorite, brings two buffs, crit rate and crit damage, two buffs that you really, really want. So why Ursula? Well, Ursula does a couple of things for me. One, she brings strengthen. Now, Wixwell brings increased defense, so this doesn't matter, but she brings strengthen. That does a couple of things. One, my team will take less damage from the hits that they receive, therefore hurting the shield less. And two, she also brings increased attack, which is an additional buff. So she's bringing two buffs versus a High Katoon bringing one buff. However, High Katoon brings speed and an aura. So... It's kind of a trade-off, right? My team is slower, but more buffs. Where Haikatoon's team has less buffs, but is faster, right? It was an experiment. I tried it a couple of different times. I managed to find the sweet spot where it would work for me. Um, now, if you do want to copy my team exactly as it is, I will note that the positioning of Ursula, she is my stun target, at least on this affinity. Other affinities will be a problem for me, but on this affinity, and because it's the same affinity that I had yesterday when I when I ran the team and it worked, uh, she is the stun target. And that is why I actually had to build her tankier, because she wasn't able, her shield 
would get damaged too much by both the stun and then the regular clan boss damage. So she wasn't getting her shield extended enough and she would then die. Which, like I said, wouldn't really be a problem because she's not my buff extender. She has no purpose to the team other than to bring these additional buffs and, of course, do damage. Uh, she is in War Master for some additional damage. Um, let's see, what else did I kind of figure out? You want to make sure, I think I said this already, but I'll, I'll say it again just to, to, to make it clear. You need these th three champions to not only be fast, but also within range of each other's speeds. So if Wixwell is faster than, way faster than Godseeker and Anchorite, then his buff will run out. So even though you have a 2 million value shield, I'm just making up a number here, if the time, if the, the stack on the shield runs out and you end up with uh, zero stacks, that shield just disappears and then Wixwell can easily die in Clan Boss. And there's no way to recoup that because you're building it up over time while Clan Boss's damage is going up. So eventually Clan Boss's damage, you won't have an opportunity to rebuild it. Even if he recasts it and everybody sinks back up as far as speed tuning, you that shield will not get big enough because he does way more damage at that point than what the shield the value of the shield is also the shield set buff will also be gone that's kind of your indicator that somebody's gonna die when you're doing this and you're manualing it i don't know if it's a coding thing in the game or what but the shield set shield will fall off first from damage um, so that would be we'll say destroyed that'll get destroyed first over the wixwell shield so you'll kind of see what i mean when i put the team into action but um well i guess you won't because i don't it's not in a failed state it's in a it's in a successful state but what would happen is shields are going up shields are going up everything looks good and then all of a sudden even though it was three stacks of the shield set shield the shield set shield would just disappear. And then that means, okay, that champion is about to die because they no longer have the shield set shield uh, because they've taken too much damage. And the shield from Wixwell being the only shield just isn't enough to keep them alive because we can't, we're not going to be able to build up the value of two shields. We're only building up the value of one shield and it, it, it kind of spirals out of control for that, that particular champion. So that happened to my God Seeker many, many times because early on, God Seeker was my stun target. Inadvertently, because I've never been the best at managing who my stun target is. So I've got the team figured out. I'm going to put it into action. You guys are going to see it. And then I'm once we kind of have established that it works, I'm going to cut. And then I'll show you guys the end result score of what it was i'm trying to just think and make sure that i did oh so my total number of buffs i wanted to give you guys guys that amount so intercept doesn't count that doesn't get extended so we have increased defense and wixwell shield so that's two buffs uh none from god seeker from ursula we have two buffs so now we're at four anchorite we've got two buffs so we're at six and then geomancer doesn't bring any buffs but he will steal whatever buff that the clan boss gives themselves so he does get uh an additional buff but but all in all i have six buffs total oh and the shield set so seven buffs total which is very important to note like I said, I, thought, I, I I haven't been able... I don't have the champions to test if two God Seekers would, would still would work with Wixwell if you don't have all of these other buffs, right? So another really important tip, I don't have very good reflex gear. I did at one point have God Seeker in reflex. But really, if you are going to try to run Reflex, you should put it on your Wixwell. Because his this uh, Tempest of Knowledge is way better to get 
multiple times. Yes, it makes it easier if reflex props on Godseeker and you get that one extra buff extension. Totally great. You love it. It, it. it keeps you safe. You won't ever run out of, you know, that then all of a sudden after a long fight and so many reflex procs, you'll end up with, instead of being around two to three stacks of a shield set, you'll be at nine, ten, you know, seven, a much higher number. So reflex is great. However, Godseeker is kind of the the victim of poor placement in the team. Because she was my stun target, I had to build her much tankier. Um, so she went with high defense, but I had to keep her speed high to keep up with everybody. It was just kind of a, a bit of a cluster. But um, now that I've moved her, then I put Ursula in that spot that made her the stun target. But then Ursula started dying. So I had to fix that. And um, I don't know yet if this team is full affinity or not. More to be seen there. Ultimately, speed or a lead with a speed buff will make a huge difference. For That's the easier way to make the team. Because you're getting that extra buff in the speed buff. And then you're also getting that aura lead, which means you could eat more easily achieve the speeds you need for a 2-1 ratio. That way, Wixwell will pop this more often, and you won't need as many buffs. So my team is slower, but I'm increasing more buffs, which increases that shield faster. Um, so ultimately, if the easiest way to build the team, lots of buffs, lots of speed. Just make sure everyone's kind of close together in speed, or else they won't. They'll they'll uh, outrun their buffs. Another theory that I'm going, I've got two champions that I are am considering putting into this team. One is Razzlevard, but Razzlevard is tricky. I want to talk to you guys about this just a little bit because. So Razzlevard would theoretically only place this increased speed once, and he brings increased accuracy. Again, two buffs. So if we replace Ursula with Razzlevarg, we gain a speed or a lead, we gain increased speed, and we gain another buff in increased accuracy that we don't currently have. So that keeps us at seven buffs total, and one of those buffs being increased speed, and we have an aura. The whole team is faster. He, now, one concern with Razzlevarg is he would outrun his buffs, right? Well, theoretically, and I've been told I'm correct in this, but I haven't tested it, the, this increased speed, he only increases his own speed every time he places the increased speed buff. If he never places this buff, he can't outrun anybody because he, he won't get up to 100 more speed. So, theoretically, this would work. Um, he does give himself turn meter on the A1, which is a little concerning, but... I feel pretty confident that that Razzlevarg would be a good solution. Now, why don't I just go ahead and run High Katoon? That's a totally viable idea. High Katoon would be easier to build because I only need uh, epic books instead of legendary books and stuff. But she's going to do considerably less damage than what Razzlevarg could do and can provide the exact same benefit that High Katoon does, and then some, because we also get increased accuracy as well. So Razzlebarg would be my choice if I can make him work with the team. The other option, and I know there is a member of our community who loves to hear me say this other option, would be the Panda. Because um, Panda actually does increase buffs. Uh... He also would, would speed up the shield increase as well, by the way. Um, where is it? Also increases the duration of all buffs on all allies by one turn. Now, the increase of his shield increase is only... Uh, oh, it, 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 it won't increase by that much because it's only based by how much of the enemy buffs that you decreased. So in the case of... 
Cran boss, he'll only buff himself, I think, I think, when he's in a non-void affinity, and even then, he only buffs himself with one buff. So, not going to be a huge increase to the shield, but the duration of all buffs is huge. Then he also brings increased accuracy and increased attack, which we lose if we take out Ursula. So he basically does the same thing that Ursula does, except instead of strength, then we bring increased attack. Um, he also has a really weird interaction that I found out. So his whole kit is that at the end of his turn, he puts himself to sleep, but then immediately removes him at the start of the turn, which so he he's never really slept. But it's funny because he won't put himself to sleep if he's under intercept, which I tested and was really funny to see that he, he won't put himself to sleep, which is not a big deal. But part of his kit is that if he's asleep, he can transfer buffs and things like their debuffs. But either way, he would still solve the problem. He would bring the correct number of buffs and he's just a possibly higher damage dealing champion than an Ursula. So... Um, however, as much as my community wants me to build the bear, uh, he does have a lot more defense to start, um, than Ursula does and probably more than Razzlevarg too. Yeah. So he'd be a little bit easier to build and keep alive either way. Right now, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'm in no rush to build Razzlevard to try and make this team work with him because it does exactly what I needed to do. It's a one key Ultra Nightmare Clan boss. It works very e much easier in Nightmare, I found. So really, we are totally fine. Now, I have talked a lot about this team. I'm very sorry, guys. I just wanted to make everything clear because I learned so much while making this team. If you don't believe me, it's on VOD. Go check it out. Yesterday, I wanted to record this at 7 o'clock. I figured it would take me half hour, 45 minutes. I'd upload it and tell you guys I'm streaming, to, you know, last night, right? That was the whole plan. And I was working on it right up until after my shard pull, uh, until I finally got it to completely uh, work. So... Sorry, I was noticing this Wixwell team here, and it does do a one key, but I wonder, too, if this struggles to get the shield big enough because they, you may not be bringing enough buffs without something like an Anchorite. I'm just curious. I'll have to talk to SDK and see how his team is doing because uh, I feel like mine does more than that. But let's put it into action here. So I am not going to quick battle. I will leave it on auto. Oh, let's, sorry. Let's go over the team setup real quick, too. Uh, as far as order goes, for me, whoever is in the second place on this affinity will be the stun target. Uh, because they won't, the, the, the clan boss will not stun someone with counterattack. So, or it'll try not to. So, Wixwell having counterattack, they try not to stun him. So, then they go to the next in line, which is Ursula. She's an easy target. They do stun her. Also, this uh, blessing doesn't work in this team. That's a holdover blessing from a previous attempt or from previous runs where she would uh, keep everybody, um, where she would deflect damage with that, in that uh, increased defense mechanic. So don't look into the blessings too much. I haven't bothered with those. Let's talk now order. So we open with... The intercept ability, this is what places the shield, the original shield, and the original increased defense. Um, and then you want to always use this number one priority. So even if this is off cooldown, you want to use this. So open with codex and then tell it to run normally. And then this is your go-to ability because this is how you make the shield bigger, make the value of the shield greater. Ursula actually opens with Requiem because we want to get this strengthen out so that it can get extended and increase that stuff. Then she goes with the A2 to get that increased attack out, which gives us more buffs to extend. Theoretically, you could go either one, 
but um, I would rather get that strengthen out first. With Anchorite, we actually open with Sacred Trust. This gives the entire team crit rate and crit damage. Those are those two extra buffs that I told you about. And then we start extending buffs. We never use this ability again. We just rotate between the uh, A1 and the A2. Godseeker Aniri, because she is slightly faster than my Wixwell, I have her opening with the A1. And then... And then prioritizing the A2. This is the buff extension ability. You want this to go off at any time. Geomancer, A1. Anytime you can. Get that HP burn out there. Um, I could, I should probably rework his masteries, but for, for the time being, we're good. So that is the team. I will leave it on auto. And here we go. My This is going to be a little bit longer of a video because we're probably going to be watching this for a bit of time here. Because I do want you guys to see how big the shields get and a great way to evaluate and test your team. Now, if you're trying to build this team and you're going through and testing it, one thing you're going to run into is wasting keys. To avoid that, if you crash your game, I like to use uh, control, uh, the task manager and close it. In, there's probably other better ways to do it. I close it in task manager just to make sure that it closes. It won't save your run. So you'll be able to try again. So I did that several times yesterday in order to get this to tested um, and to work. A great way to tell if your team is going to fail is if this this buff right here with the the shield, the fancy shield with the the, uh, plat the crisscross pattern on it, whatever you want to call it, um, that shield is the shield set shield. So what you'll find is that that shield will fall off first if they're taking too much damage. Sorry, my audio is a little off. I'm adjusting it for myself. As you can see, we've got four stacks of all of the shields. Everything's looking really, really good. My best team was looking like this. And then Wixwell eventually, over a long period of time outran his buffs and even though they were massive they fell off another recommendation if you are testing and experimenting with this team i recommend a good gauge of how big the shield is is don't look at the value of the shield but look at the bars of health so you'll see that he just extended the shield and she went down to three bars of health and then that shield took some damage and she went up to about three and a half really hard to see i'm not sure how well it's going to come across on camera but when Wixwell extends the shield again here in a second, you'll see she's at about four bars of health. And then Wixwell is going to extend it and she'll probably go down to about three. So it should be right here. Yeah, so about two and a quarter. And then they took damage and went to about three. But the point is, is that her health bars is getting smaller and smaller. It's getting compressed by the size of that shield. And eventually, you're going to see the shield go into a form that is very, very fine lines. And that's when you know you've done it. You've, hit, you've achieved it. That shield will not be coming off. We should see that here in a couple of moments. Now, because of the way that I'm running this team, we don't have that much damage. Because Ursula doesn't really do anything. Everything, damage-wise, is coming out of Geomancer. Now you'll see she's at about two and a half bars here. And I keep pointing at Ursula because Ursula has been my most recent champion that has been dying a lot. Because she does take all of the stuns. And she obviously takes all of the damage that everyone just took. Now, she's not getting stunned because we have intercept on her. There is a bit of a glitch as well. Ideally, you don't want one of your buff extenders taking the stun. Even though intercept will eventually end up on everybody, what will happen is that even if they're under one stack of intercept, they won't... Wixwell's AI is not smart enough to target and say, oh, they're only under one stack of intercept. I have to give it to them. No, he gives it to them when they're at zero stacks. 
So I've seen it where everybody had two stacks, Ursula had one stack, and he put Intercept on himself and refreshed his two stacks. It was kind of silly. This is the magic shield that I'm talking about. So you can see here, the shields have now grown enough on most of the champions to where uh, it's super compressed in size. Or the HP bar is super compressed and you almost only see the shield buff. And you'll see that Ursula is getting close and Godseeker are getting close to that point. We're about to get another shield increase here in a second. Now Godseeker's at that point. The damage came out and didn't reduce it. We still have the five the you know the stacks of this shield on Ursula. You just want to keep an eye on that because if if you're testing like I was and that falls off, that's a clear indication that a champion is going to die. In this particular team, if Ursula was to die, actually it would be a problem because he may not be able to extend the shield enough because we won't have as many buffs. And there it is. Now, this is the point where I say, all right, team is done. But this is the most effective version of the team that I was able to make. And once you see those magic shield bars, that's when you can say, okay, we've, we've done it. I'm looking, I, it doesn't look like it's showing up on camera how thin these bars are. Like, on my recording, it just looks like really big, thick shield bars, but, um, which is really interesting that it's showing up that way. But either way, this is everything. You'll see there's Ursula still taking the stun. This team will continue to go until 1,500 turns. Now, I am going to stop recording here. I'm going to take us off auto. And... I will then run the quick battle and I'll show you guys the finished team so you can see the total amount of damage output and we can analyze that. Okay guys, you can see here we do have our final output of the team. So the team did 309 million damage. We did 1500 turns. Clan boss had 249 turns and Geomancer did 252 million damage. He is a great pairing for this team. A couple of things I didn't talk about. As far as who your DPS champion is, make sure they're tanky uh, to an extent. I tried Rathalos and Geomancer at a point, and then granted the team was not perfect. I had a lot of issues that I had to work out in the team. But when I ran Geomancer and Rathalos, what ended up happening was uh, Rathalos would die much in the same way that I was showing you how Ursula could have you know you saw how ursula's shield took longer to get to that magic point maybe i don't know how it showed up on camera um that was a problem for rathalos because he's an attack based champion i built him as such he was much weaker i didn't have as much defense to keep him alive so uh despite the size of the shield he was just taking more damage than anybody else because he didn't have the de defense to mitigate that incoming damage. I assume that's the only thing that made sense. He wasn't stun targeted, but he was getting, he was dying. Um, his shield was running out and it wasn't a, a, a turn meter thing because my Rathalos was actually a lot slower than everybody. And even though he gave himself increased speed that stayed on himself, it didn't work out. So uh, I then put in Newt, and that solved it immediately. But Geomancer scales better than Newt on this because uh, his mechanic will do more damage as the clan boss increases in damage, right? Um, I think there's a cap either... We, we were looking at it. There is either a cap to the output of Geomancer's reflect ability... Or, and I'm not. Ta I'm talking about the reflectability, not his uh, Warmaster proc that he has in his kit. Or, um, there was. It, you you couldn't tell that a massive amount of numbers show up when the clan boss takes the turn, and we couldn't. Me and several other people could not figure out 
if the damage was increasing. And there was two things. One, either there's a cap on Geomancer's damage or the clan boss stops gaining damage um, at, a, at a certain point, which we don't know. <laughs> I, I'd like to assume there's probably just a cap on Geomancer's output, but I would love to get with somebody. If you guys want to do me a favor and kind of share this video, uh, talk about this video with your friends, if you're members of other communities and let them know, because I did a lot of experimenting on this, but I don't have the technical knowledge or the resources to really get into the, the weeds about it. But I would love to see how some of these interactions go because this is 309 million damage on a pretty, I mean, it took me some time to get it perfect, but that's a ton of ultra nightmare clan boss damage on a free to play account, hundred percent free to play. Never spent a penny on this account and Wixwell and two buff extenders have managed to completely change my account. I now have quick battle, one key, ultra nightmare. I don't have to worry about popping my key first thing in the morning so that I have all four keys every day. Now I can easily farm. And we'll, I'll, you know what? Let me show you real quick um, what it does on nightmare. And it does take a while for the quick battle to generate. So... Uh, because it's going to 1,500 turns instead of just, like, 50, which is, you know, a little different. But on Nightmare, probably about the same amount of damage. Uh, surprisingly less... Oh, less damage. So this kind of confirms a little bit of what I'm talking about with Ultra Nightmare Clan Boss. My guess is we, we literally could not tell because all of the numbers were jumbled up together um, when the Clan Boss would do damage. But I'm guessing... Because Geomancer reflected more damage on Ultra Nightmare, that the scaling is a big part of it. And so Geomancer is able to reflect all of that, like that higher damage output from Ultra Nightmare Clan Boss, more so than Nightmare, who it would eventually do less. But we still went 1500 turns. That's still a one key. Obviously, we are doing great. So. Feel free to let me know in the comments if you have any questions, if you have any struggles. If you've seen a video or heard another content creator talk about how this worked better or that worked better, um, you know, I would love to to find out more information. I want to I want to tinker with this team quite a bit. I'm very excited about the prospect of replacing Ursula. Once Anchorite gets Warmaster, he's gonna do more damage, so the team will get better. But just imagine if this was a Razzlevarg instead of Ursula. That could be really, really good um, for the for the the damage output of this team. So instead of 14 million, we might see something more like you know 50 million, um, 60 million. I I don't know. I, I really don't know how much damage that uh, Razzlevarg would be able to do in this team. So really excited about that possibility. Other things, to, reflex sets. Once I get better reflex gear, putting a reflex set on Wixwell will speed the shield generation up even more. So that's going to be really good. You don't want to use Relentless because Relentless, while he'll he'll put his shield out more, he's also going to outrun his buffs more <laughs> uh, because extra turns don't necessarily equate the right the right way with the when it comes to the buff extension. I guess unless all of them were in, but then I still feel like it could eventually fail that way. So um, yeah, it's safer to not use Relentless on anybody in a team like this. I hope this video helps you. Thank you for watching. Uh, definitely a longer video than normal, but I think it was worth it. I think a lot of information was, was found here and feel free to reference this video anytime you're working on your own Wixwell team. Um, if you enjoyed my content, please consider subscribing. I am a relatively new content creator in the raid space and I am trying to grow the channel. So the best way to support me is to click that subscribe button. It really helps me out. I also have a very active discord where we're constantly helping. And I actually reached out to my discord last night when I was recording this live troubleshooting this team and said, Hey, I need your guys help. What are your thoughts? Do you think this will work? Do you think that will work? And we kind of troubleshot it together and eventually found this wonderful version of the team that I'm super proud of. So, all right, guys.
Thank you all so, so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.